You are welcome to today's video lesson with Bright Edo. In today's lesson, I'll be answering various practice questions that cut across the subject called biology, whereby the first question I'll be answering now is question number one, and it is, it says, which of the following is a polysaccharide? Now, first of all, we have to know what a polysaccharide is. And a polysaccharide is simply a carbohydrate. And polysaccharides, they are complex units of monosaccharide moieties. Okay, whereby we have various examples of polysaccharides like likes of cellulose, like likes of glycogen. Okay, whereby for option A is called glucose. And glucose is not a polysaccharide, but rather glucose is a monosaccharide. And monosaccharides are sugars, to be specific, simple sugars. Okay, but they're not asking us for which of these is a polysaccharide. And polysaccharide, they are complex sugars. Okay, they are formed from many or uh, simple sugars coming together whereby glucose is a monosaccharide so it can be a polysaccharide as earlier said which is the uh, polysaccharide out of this option it is option d okay cellulose is what a polysaccharide moving further to sucrose and maltose these two they are not polysaccharides but rather they are disaccharides because they are formed by the combination of two monosaccharides moieties so the point here is this this is a monosaccharide whereby these two options they are disaccharides and how do we form disaccharides disaccharides are formed by the combination of two simple sugars which are monosaccharides with the elimination of water so for a disaccharide to be formed there will be elimination of water that's a condensation reaction do you get so the point here is this how do we get sucrose and how do we get maltose let's form maltose maltose is formed by the combination of two glucose moieties that means glucose will react with glucose so we are to get maltose and this works in the presence of an enzyme called maltase though i did not write the chemical reaction to this okay because me writing the chemical reaction i'm going to remove water okay so basically this reaction as written here is a condensation reaction this must be noted you can be at the reaction that requires the removal of water okay is basically called a condensation reaction whereby for we to form sucrose is by reacting glucose and another and another monosaccharide remember for we to get a disaccharide two monosaccharides must come together but in this case the monosaccharide will be called fructose and fructose basically is still a monosaccharide so when both of them come together they form this called sucrose and sucrose is a disaccharide and this is a polysaccharide we have another example of disaccharide like likes of lactose. Lactose is a disaccharide and it is formed by reacting glucose and another monosaccharide called galactose. So all this must be noted. So moving over to question number two, which says, which is the largest and the highest level of ecological organization now this must be noted you know this is on the concept called ecology okay so it must be noted that out of this option the one that is the largest and highest level of ecological organization is simply called the biosphere okay though it has a trend to which it works and first of all it starts with population okay population forms the community and community basically forms the ecosystem okay whereby ecosystem now form the highest and the largest level of ecological organization called the biosphere and the biosphere is the zone where life exists okay it is the zone where life exists so this must be noted so what becomes the option option a so moving over to question number three which says the solid part of the head cross it is very easy it is called the lithosphere okay the solid part of the head cross is called the lithosphere this is the zone where life exists this is the zone where we find where we find gases and this is the zone where uh, uh, we find water okay called the hydrosphere but for the solid part of the head uh, uh is called the lithosphere so with all this said let's quickly go over to question 
number four okay guys moving over to the next practice question which is question number four it says the smallest and the simplest group of microorganism that lacks cell structure is called so all these options they are microorganism from the word micro it means that they can't be seen with the naked eyes so we use an instrument to view them and it is called microscope so they are now asking out of this microorganism which of these lacks cell structure it must be noted that it is the virus because sometimes virus can be living and in another condition vir viruses can be non-living due to they basically lack the what cell structure this must be noted so question number five the, te the technique of growing microorganism in the laboratory is called culture okay and the instrument used for culturing microorganism in the laboratory is called the petri dish and it must be noted that viruses or virus cannot be grown using the petri dish reasons being that they lack what the cell structure because when a virus is seen in an environment that has life it becomes living and when that virus is seen in another environment without life it becomes non-living and it will now be called a virion and that particular virus in that particular uh, uh, case will crystallize will now start forming crystals so this must be noted that the technique of growing microorganism in the laboratory is called culture and the instruments to or uh, to uh, perform this culture is called the petri dish and viruses can be grown using the petri dish so moving forward question number six it says drinking alcohol in excess can affect the liver through okay is it jaundice is it cirrhosis is it liver fluke or, or, or dropsy it is basically cirrhosis okay drinking alcohol in excess can affect the liver through cirrhosis whereby there is replacement of damaged liver cells by unwanted fibrous substances okay because of the alcohol content it damages the liver so that part of the liver that is damaged unwanted fibrous substances will now fit into that particular part of the liver that is damaged so it leads to what we call liver cirrhosis for this which is dropsy it is not a liver disease but rather a kidney disease or sometimes called odema okay whereby jaundice is a liver disease so all these must be noted so let's go over to the next practice question which is question number seven guys moving further let's go over to the next practice question which is question number seven and it says in hormonal coordination impulses which are in the form of signals are carried in chemical form this must be noted in hormonal coordination impulses are carried in the form of chemical form whereby in the other coordinating system we have called the nervous coordinating system the impulses there are carried in electrical form and sometimes chemical form but just take note in hormonal hormonal has to do with uh, uh, chemical substance because these hormones from the word hormonal coordinating system what does it secrete it secrete hormone and you already know that hormones are chemical substances so the impulses will be carried in the form of chemical form so moving further to question number eight which says which of the gland below is called the master gland the gland that is regarded to be called the master gland is called the pituitary gland okay we have the anterior pituitary gland and also the posterior pituitary gland that produces these hormones called the anterior pituitary hormone and also the posterior pituitary hormone so you should take note of that meanwhile for question number nine it says which gland in the body is located at the neck now this must be noted the gland in the body that is located in the neck region is called the thyroid gland this must be noted okay the gland that is located in the neck region of the body is called what the thyroid gland whereby moving further to the last question which is question number 10 the question says the hormone that regulates calcium level in the blood is there are two major hormones that regulate calcium level in the blood one is called the para thyroid hormone and the other is called calcitonin 
these are the two hormones that regulate calcium level in the blood whereby one of them regulate calcium level by increasing the level of calcium in the blood while the other regulate calcium level by decreasing the level of calcium in the blood now this must be noted for the parathyroid hormone it basically regulates calcium level by increasing calcium level in the blood whereby for the calcitonin hormone it regulates calcium level by decreasing calcium level in the blood so all these questions must be noted okay so if you find this video helpful make sure you do well to hit the subscribe button and also share these lessons with your friends okay so that whenever i post another revision biology question you get notified thanks for watching